Integumentary Disorders Lecture. In this lecture, we will list and describe the major skin disorders that are not caused by infective microorganisms. Acne vulgaris is an inflammation of the sebaceous glands and hair follicles. Some symptoms consist of papules, pustules, and cysts that are present, or forms of comedones which are plugged skin pores. These will then form whiteheads or blackheads. The etiology is unknown, but we consider this as a metabolic disorder because it is commonly occurs during puberty. Some things that may be thought as the etiology of acne are hereditary, allergies, and endocrine disorders. The diagnosis of acne is basically off of observation, and the treatment is cleansing the area, avoiding heavy makeup, topical treatments such as retin-A or benzoyl, or oral medications can also be used such as tetracycline. There are many more medications that can be used and these are just a few examples of each. Seborrheic dermatitis is the dermatitis affecting the sebaceous glands. We often call this cradle cap in infants as you can see pictured on the right and dandruff in adults. The etiology is unknown and symptoms include skin redness and covered with a greasy looking yellowish scales or the eyebrows or the eyelashes have dry dirty white scales to them. The diagnosis is the appearance of the lesions and the treatment is over-the-counter dandruff shampoos such as Nizoral or sometimes we will use fluorocinolone which also has a steroid included in it. Sebaceous cysts are a closed sac of oily cheese-like material located under the skin. They can be located anywhere on the skin. Pylonyl cysts develop around the hair in the sacral coccygeal area and as you can see on the right, a picture of a cyst at the sacral coccygeal area in the lower back and pelvic area. The etiology of these cysts develops when the sebaceous gland becomes blocked and the sebum collects under the skin. Symptoms include the presence of a cyst, red, warmth, and tenderness in the area. Diagnosis is observation and the treatment includes warm, moist compresses and sometimes excision and drainage of the cyst. In some cases, surgical removal of the cyst may be necessary. Eczema, also called atopic dermatitis, is another disorder of the skin and is an inflammation of the skin. The etiology occurs in those with genetic predispositions to allergies and substances or foods that can irritate the skin. Some symptoms are dry, leathery skin lesions. There will be itching, redness, vesicles, pustules, scales, or a crust that can occur. Diagnosis is observation and the treatment can be anywhere from topical cortisone creams, antihistamines, sedatives, and to avoid sunlight. Urticaria or contact dermatitis is also called hives or nettle rash, which is more widespread. Contact dermatitis is more localized to where the contact was. The etiology is contact with the irritant. Symptoms are red elevated lesions, such as called wheels or hives. And the diagnosis is observation. The treatment can be antihistamines such as Benadryl or Zyrtec, for example, and the prevention would be to avoid irritants. Scleroderma is 
a chronic autoimmune disorder characterized by hardening and thickening of thickening and shrinking of the connective tissues of the body, including the skin. As you can see in the picture to the right, patients with scleroderma can have very tight skin in the facial region and can be very apparent when looking at them. However, the tightness is not always present. Lymph cells stimulate production of collagen, which causes an overproduction of the collagen, which causes the thickening and shrinking of the connective tissues. Some symptoms are thick, leather-like appearance. Diagnosis is tight skin around the face or hands, changes in capillaries in the fingernail beds, and calcium deposits under the skin. The treatment for scleroderma, there is no treatment to stop the progression. However, treatment to minimize the symptoms are anti-inflammatory medications and immunosuppressive therapies. Psoriasis is the, is the rapid replacement of epidermal cells. This can oftentimes be considered a cancerous type disease or tumor-like disease as it is the rapid multiplication of epidermal cells. The etiology is unknown and there is said to be a hereditary component. Stress, infection, trauma, and sunlight exacerbate the flare-ups of psoriasis. Symptoms include red raised lesions with silvery scales. Diagnosis is observation. Sometimes they will do a biopsy to determine the exact type. There are several different kinds of psoriasis out there. The treatment is salicylic acid, coal tar, UV light treatments, steroids, vitamin D, vitamin A, immunosuppressive therapies such as Humira can also be used. And in the picture in the right shows a patient with psoriasis. Typically, these happen, the patches happen in the elbow area is a very common area to see these, um, but can cover anywhere on the body. And as you can see, the silvery scales briefly within the lesion. Rosacea is an inflammation and redness of the forehead, nose, cheeks, and chin. Etiology is really unknown. However, fair-skinned females between the ages of 30 and 50 are more, more prevalent and is caused by the enlargement of blood vessels under the skin. Symptoms are red, bulbous nose, burning or stinging sensation of the face, bloodshot or irritated or watery eyes. Diagnosis, observation, treatment, there is no known cure, but it is important to avoid triggers. Semiratic keratosis is a benign tumor caused by the overgrowth of epithelial cells. Etiology is unknown and appears to be age-related. Typically happens in our geriatric patients. Symptoms are tan, brown, black, gross with well-defined borders. Sometimes they are warty-like and can be dry and rough. And the picture on the right here is a good example of somebody with seborrheic keratosis. As you can see, they are sometimes rough larger areas. Diagnosis is observation. Sometimes treatment, these are basically harmless, so unless there is a reason, we don't treat these, but if it is irritating to a patient or they want it removed, we can skin scrape them. Keloids are benign raised firm irregular masses of scar tissue. The etiology is the overgrowth of collagen. Symptoms are 
They're unsightly masses, but basically they are harmless. Diagnosis is just observation. We can treat these with radiation, steroid injections, or cryotherapy. Hemangioma, there are several different types. The birthmark is a benign, flat irregularity caused by overgrowth of blood vessels, melanocytes, smooth muscle, fat, fibroblasts, or keratinocytes. Strawberry henangioma is a benign, abnormal tumor with vessels filled with blood. Port Weinstein's permanent capillary malformation in the skin. And then stork bites are temporary nevus simplexes. A henangioma, the etiology is unknown. The diagnosis is observation and treatment usually is not necessary because some of them dissolve on their own, but they can also be surgically removed. Here are some examples of each one. This on the lower right hand side is the stork bite, which often dissolves on its own. In the upper right hand is the Port Weinstein, as you can see, ruby red areas, and these can happen typically on any part of the body. The upper left hand corner is a birthmark, and the lower right hand corner is the strawberry hemangioma. Nevises are also called moles. They can be brown, black, or pink in color due to the collection of melanocytes. They appear on any part of the body and can be of various sizes. It is important to educate patients on the ABCDEs of moles in order to detect whether they are cancerous or not. A is for asymmetry. B is for border, C is for color, D is for diameter, and then E is for evolving. So on the left hand side, it gives you great pictures of normal looking moles. And on the right hand side, we have the cancerous type looking moles. It gives you examples of each category. Permanent and malignant tumors, pre-malignant, Tumors are considered atenic keratosis, basal cell carcinoma. Malignant tumors are squamous cell carcinoma, melanoma, capsopsy, sarcoma. Atenic keratosis is also called sunspots, a slight darkening of the skin. Etiology is excessive sun exposure. Symptoms include growth of multiple wart-like lesions on sun-exposed areas, diagnosis, examination, treatment can be retin-A or curtage or scraping or cryotherapy. Basal cell carcinoma, the most common type, it's very slow growing and locally invading. The etiology is unclear but is linked to genetic environmental factors. Symptoms include nodules with depressed center or a smooth shiny bump that is pink to pearly white or is a non-healing lesion that bleeds easily. Diagnosis is typically done by biopsy and we usually treat them by surgically removing them. Squamous cell carcinomas are less common. They grow more rapidly. They can be metastatic. The etiology for squamous cell carcinomas are sun-exposed skin. Symptoms are firm red nodules with crusts or slightly eleva elevated plaques. The diagnosis is a biopsy and treatment is surgical excision with some radiation. And the lower right hand corner is an example of the squamous cell carcinoma. Melanoma, the most serious type and is the most deadly of all the skin cancers. The etiology is uncontrolled growth of melanocytes, said to be genetic and have environmental factors that play a part, primarily sun exposure. 
Symptoms include tum the tumor can be tan, brown, or black, arises in a mole and changes the size and color of the mole, metastasizes quickly and spreads to the lymph nodes quickly. Treatment is surgical excision, radiation, and chemo. Prognosis depends on the degree of the spread, but 20% of people who have melanoma die. Cap Capopsy sarcomas are associated with AIDS and HIV infections. Etiology is not fully understood. Symptoms include malignant vascular skin tumors, bluish red cutaneous patches that grow under the skin, and the nose and the mouth can make it painful and difficult to eat. Diagnosis is typically examination and then biopsy of them, and then treatment is liquid nitrogen, radiation, and also chemotherapy.